Fred McNeil and you're watching QAC TV7 and we have a wonderful show called Discover Queen Anne's County and what we do every week we have different people come and they tell us the history of Queen Anne's County some of the local lore that we want to share with all the generations uh, today I'm delighted to have a good friend of mine Scott McGlasson Scott thank you for being with us good morning sir Scott is the clerk of the circuit course right. for Queen Anne's County and Scott is a wonderful singer, a walking <laughs> historian, and you can see we got all types of goodies here. I do before I want to start. Scott, it's uh, now uh, 10.30 and it's 95 degrees already, so thank you for uh, our studio's AC isn't working. Right, 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 right. Now, Scott, let's start with this. We're right in front of this wonderful uh, Queen Anne statue that most people say, oh yeah, I know the old courthouse and I know the statue. Yes. Now you've got a little bit of history of the statue to share with us. It, it is. Please, it, go ahead. And it's funny how, how history works, but as you say, the uh, here's the statue of, of Queen Anne, and uh, matter of fact, the only statue of Queen Anne in the United States. But uh, uh, several years ago, uh, what I have here is what's called a marquette, French word for, for a small statue. Okay. And uh, the, the sculptures uh, here was Elizabeth Gordon Chandler. And there was a competition that was done to select, you know, what, what statue was going to be. What's going to be the best statue Exactly. To have, sure. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the benefactors of this statue were Mr. Arthur Houghton okay. down at the Aspen Institute and Mr. Clarence Miles, who... Two great contributors yes. to Queen Anne's County in a lot of different areas. Absolutely. Areas. And, and uh, so there was a competition. And a lady by the name of Elizabeth Gordon Chandler uh, was the uh, lady that was selected uh, to do this statue. But what she did, she came down for prior to 1977 when this was dedicated. She came down as part of the of the uh, competition and and bought this this Marquette down, and that's what she showed the county commissioners and and uh, and uh, uh, Mr. Miles and, and Mr. Houghton. But. We were not aware of this until several years ago. You didn't even know ago. this existed? No, no did no. not even know it existed. And it's in this little box. It's got a cover there. And, and just for the audience, we're talking something about a foot high. Yeah, about 12 Can inches. Can I touch this guy? Absolutely. And it, it, it's, it's obviously a dried clay. Clay, but right? you can smell the clay. You, you actually smell it? Yeah. Okay. Isn't that something? And it's an exact, as I look up, it's an exact model. I don't, right. And first appearances, I mean, this is exactly... What we have in front of the courthouse. Exactly, and okay. and so she was the, she was the winner of that competition. But what happened here? I got a telephone call from uh, uh, Harry Duffy, Stony Duffy, okay. you know Stony. Sure. And uh, Stony said that his sister Amanda, who was born and raised here in Centerville, okay. lives in Old Lyme, Connecticut. All right. And she uh, had an advertisement out of the Banner, Cambridge newspaper, that she took up to Elizabeth Chandler thought that she would want this back. Sure. So she takes this article up and finds out that Elizabeth Chandler unhappily has passed away okay. and that they were having an estate auction. And so uh, Amanda walks through and she sees and this. And she sees this. Okay. And she asks, can I buy this? And they said, well, we're having the auction tomorrow, but, but come back tomorrow. Okay. So she, goes, she comes back the next day and there's a sold sign on this. And she you know, got, it was not sure what it turned she out. She panicked a little bit. Panicked yeah. a little bit. But as it turned out, she she bought, she purchased it. All right. So she gets this and she's walking out the door, and this lady comes through and she said, "Oh, you you bought the statue." Said said I wanted to buy that because I'm from Centerville. Okay. Well, as it turned out, do you remember Elizabeth Ford? Sure. Libby Ford. She was a town commissioner, yes. and counselor at the high school, and teacher for 30 or 40 years. A wonderful lady. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful lady. By the way, I ran against her. She beat me by 100 votes in the election. Is that right? So. <laughs> uh, she was good. She, she was, was a, a wonderful. Lady. She was a great lady. Uh, but it turned out that, that it was her daughter, Carol Ann Ford, okay. who I went to school with. She was a little ahead of me. Uh -huh. And she also had a sister, Jane Ford. But Carol Ann said, well, I wanted to buy that because I'm from Centerville. Well, Amanda said, well, I'm from Centerville also. They didn't know each other. Okay. So, so Carol Ann was pleased it was coming back to Centerville. And, and so Stoney called me. And I said, yes, we very much would like it. Oh, great. And we're going to display it in the courthouse. Oh, so, so he, people, he gave it to you. The so, family so gave the it family, to you. So the family gave that to the okay. citizens of Queen Anne's County. Okay. And, and, and it's just a wonderful, wonderful you know, replica. The only thing that this does not have that, that uh, I think the, uh, Mr. Miles or, or Mr. Houghton asked to be added, and people will never notice this, but you see underneath the Queen Anne's chair? Right. That's her dog. That's the dog. Well, curled that's up. the first thing you know, I get a kick at it. When I bring my grandchildren here, they don't care about Queen Anne. 
and say, Pop Pop, look, there's a dog on the, the, Do you the, know there's a dog? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah, isn't yeah. that neat? Isn't okay. that neat? Oh, so the dog wasn't a... So it was not part of this original, but they asked... to know how that got on? Okay. Exactly, exactly. Oh. Can't you imagine the conversation they had there? But they did. Now, can if someone wants to see the model, do they? Is it displayed, or you have to ask yeah, somebody right. to see it? Right now, we're trying to get Stoney and I are trying to work on uh, getting a display case built okay. and okay. Uh, obtained and built, and so we can display this because people all be able to see this. Oh, this, this is, is real history of Queen Anne's County. Well, I didn't know you had this until we talked on the phone what uh, Friday, I yes, guess. Right? Yes, and yes, yes. And all of a sudden, you had. So this is. Uh, I know nothing about sculpting, but this is obviously modeled shown, shared, and then we have the exact same thing. Exactly. Plus a dog. Plus right. the dog. I mean, that's Plus that's just dog. terrific. We need to thank the Duffy family and everybody yes, we for do. contributing. Yes, we do. Right, that. right. It was very astute of Amanda to, to, you know, to pick up on that. And, and of course, she loves Queen Anne's County and her family sure. have been involved here for years and years. And as a matter of fact, uh, what I also have Please here. Please share with us. Uh, uh, actually, Arthur Houghton's daughter, Sylvia Garrett, um, uh, left these with me. And these are these are uh, programs from when the original the actual ceremony. The yeah, actual okay. ceremony. And this was. Let me just. I'm just gonna steal the cover here. No, you're right. Right. Uh, 19, 1977. 77. Okay. Yeah. And go ahead. Please continue. Right. And so it's interesting. And there, there, there are press releases and all the press that was handled here. Uh, in, information about you know Princess Anne because Princess Anne. Queen was Anne's actually here. granddaughter was, was here. actually here with Prince Philip. Okay. And there's all types of photographs and the county commission was here and it was actually what Mr. Houghton envisioned was was called Queen Anne's Day. Okay. And it's a shame that, that we don't He have, wanted to have an annual, yes, annual Queen Anne's Day. Exactly. Okay. And there and there were there were several uh, programs over the years that they had. This is kind of a really neat one. This this kind of shows a nice shot of the statue Beautiful. in front of the courthouse. Yeah. And, yeah. And um, and the ironic thing, like I say, 1977 years before I ever contemplating being, you know, representing the people sure. as their elected clerk, uh, we were invited. Carol and I were invited to go down to Aspen Institute because I had a dinner one night. Okay. And so the security was tight, and you know, so you had the state police were there and everything. But the thing was kind of ironic. We were out on the lawn and, and it had uh, dinner there. But I think we were invited because basically I'm the same age as, as, as uh, Princess Anne, so okay. we wanted some young people there. All right. and it's nice when they say we're young people. Yes, Scott. exactly. As I get older, I appreciate it. Uh, right, right. Well, that, that's <laughs> years ago, you know. <laughs> but, uh, but ironically, and as you know, I love bluegrass and country sure. music, but the, the music venue that night was bluegrass oh, okay. music. Okay. And it turned out to be a band that I know from Cecil County. You knew the, you knew the players and everything. Bob okay. Paisley and the Southern Grass. Okay. And so they played that night. And ironically, just here last Saturday, uh, my good friend, the elected clerk in Cecil County, who loves country and bluegrass music, we went to a little venue uh, up at Jimmy's Crab House where okay. the, the son of the father that played that night was playing was bluegrass playing. music. Okay. So that was, that Obviously, was really to be a clerk of a court in the Eastern Shore, you have to like bluegrass that's, music that's so you right. don't get in. It's right? a prerequisite. You know. <laughs> Now, Scott, I often drive by here and I see uh, weddings by the statue of Queen yes, Anne. I yes. see, uh, and that's kind of the charm of, right, the oldest, am I correct, the oldest courthouse, courthouse still continually in use? In the state of Maryland. And okay. actually, uh, Judge Ross went on the internet and it turns out uh, we're about the fifth oldest in the nation. In the whole country. You're right. Okay. I, I say public, that's the good news. The bad news is you want a new courthouse. we're the oldest courthouse still in continuous okay. use. So. But it's beautiful. Oh, and I, I love uh, it. I mean, I, the number of people come to a center of sightseeing, they end up here. Yes. Yeah. Yes, they do. And, and you've got, I mean, just today we have artists drawing pictures. We yes. have people, we have a farmer's market here. And it all seems to center right around the statue in the area here. Well, and, and that's interesting. Uh, Judge Sal's pointed this out to me one time. Here we are in Centerville spelled C-E-N-T-R-E-V-I-L-L-E. Not like the center of Virginia. I hear all these Virginia right. nuts give me a hard time. Right, okay. and, and you know, so it's French, Sauntry, the center okay. of the village. Okay. And of course, that's, that goes along with the eagle that's in the pediment of the building up there. Okay. That, now talk the, about that. What's the eagle in there? Yeah, well, that's that, in the pediment of the building, the okay. old courthouse. And ironically, you see a lot of photographs. And when Judge South came on the bench, it was all painted black. So nobody really knew what was there. Was underneath it? Yeah. And so he got up there, and it turns out it was an American eagle. Oh. And so he had it, you know, repainted. Cleaned up. and Cleaned up. And it was made out of wood, made out of pine, oh, and wow. carved. It's carved. And it's what we call our chicken eagle because it's, it's funny the way it doesn't look like the, the, the American eagle per se. Okay. But, but, um, but the other interesting thing is uh, some years later, as a matter of fact, uh, Sylvia Garrett 
and her husband were benefactors. We replaced the eagle. The one is is there now is Plaster Paris. Okay. And it's it's uh, it's gold. It's a replacement. The replacement, replacement because the wooden one was really getting dry, and we were okay. really afraid, and we wanted to preserve it's gonna that. It's going to break and, and yes. something. Yes, like and that's on display. In, that is on display inside the. Okay, is that in the case? Is that yes, when as soon as you the, walk? Yes. In? Mm -hmm. Scott, hey, just so we're on the topic, because I know there's a couple of things you want to talk about. If people want a tour, I mean, are there regular? How does, how does that work? For well, no, just really contact oh. us. Uh, okay. And, and you know, the, and you and you make a good point. So many times I have people say to me. God, would there be any way of coming in and, and looking at a, going to the courtroom looking and right. hearing a case? Or would there be any possibility of coming in and looking for my deed? You know, it, it's all public. It's public sure. record. And there are public records. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. And Chief Judge Bell and the Maryland Judiciary, I mean, that's Maryland law. Uh, the court is open to all public at any if, time. So do people, so now that you brought it up, if I want to go to the records, is the procedure I call ahead of time and no, say, no, 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 no. Just, just walk right up to the Walk right counter. in, yeah, absolutely. Okay. And as a matter of fact, uh, we're very fortunate in, uh, in Queen Anne's County, we have all of our land records are digitized. Okay. And at one point in time, we used to have title abstractors that would come in to abstract. Well, anymore, that really doesn't happen, and we were able to reduce our land record area because everything's online. So uh, any member of the public can go on the internet and just Google Maryland Judiciary and drill down to Queen Anne's County and land records. And it's called mdlandrec.net. That's M-D-R-E-C-L-A-N-D. Uh, and dot, dot net. And uh, they fill out an application which for username and password. The only reason for that is because that goes to Maryland State Archives. They assign you a username and password. It just makes we, it easier the next time you get right, on. And, right, and yeah. we don't want people out of China mining, you know, the sure. land records and sure. just sitting on there. But um, so people do that, and the same way with Platts, uh, Platts.net. So any any it's recorded all plats you know, the right The computers there. come to the rescue again. Right? And actually, uh, uh, we have a committee in the Clerk Association Automation Committee, where we have also miscellaneous records and. And I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased. We just are about to bring on all of our equity and chancery records. All going to be online. All been digitized. Uh, now, unfortunately, they are not available on the internet yet. Uh, but we're working on that through this committee. But, but one can come to the courthouse, and it's a software program we call use called PayProvision. And so we have uh, uh, district court liens, federal tax liens, uh, marriage records. There's, we have all our marriage records going back to 1817. Mm. And, so you can uh, find out who grandma and grandma. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes, and and that is a big thing. I mean, people are really, you know, oh, looking important. into their genealogy. Uh, so we encourage people to, to come in and visit us and and uh, visit the courtroom. Judge Ross encourages that. Uh, it, it it's terribly important that people understand it is their it's system. Pub, that's right. This is a public building. Just be again before we go on. You know, when you look outside of the building, obviously it's gorgeous. But I was surprised how far you go down. I mean, there is a, you tell me, how many floors are, I mean... Well, yes, right, three floors, and, and we do have a basement area that right. was built in the 60s. Actually, it was built during the era, of, you know, the Russians are coming. A bomb the, shell. Bomb We're all going to run to the basement yes, of the courthouse, right? Yes, exactly. Right. And that, it was built for that, but, but also, I, as I really look into it, it was also built to, because they need additional space. Okay. And, and that being said, Fred... Yeah, please. Um, I'm going to be... Make your plug. I know. That. Yeah, right. I, I Go know. for it. Go for it. Well, we, we, and this set of commissioners, and I, I don't envy the commissioners their job, particularly given the economy the tough way it times. is. Tough times. But the economy, is, I, I suggest, are always tough. Sure. But, but we desperately in Queen Anne's County need a new courthouse. Uh, we're, we're killing this judge what, up here. Scott, people always say to me, and you tell, when the public says, well, yeah, we need more, why do we? I mean, tell us why. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, many times I say to people, you know, when the county was created in 1706, we had basically about, about 18,000 people. Okay. And in 19, the 1960s, uh, the mid-60s, population was 18,000 people. We had stay, a static population. Yeah. But since that time, we've been discovered. Uh, Bay Bridge was built. <laughs> we're Second too close Bay Bridge. to everything, right? Yes. And and that's that's a good news, bad news sure. story. But sure. but now we have basically we're 50,000 people in Queen Anne's County. And it creates challenges. And, you know, they, they come, but, but also people have issues, whether, whether it be, you know, child support, uh, divorce, uh, civil litigation. Um, thank goodness we have our, our criminal uh, side is l low or lower. Fingers um, crossed when we say that. Fingers yes, crossed. exactly. Although we are experiencing some very unhappy situations. Well, we were talking before the show, as population increases, yes. unfortunately, very often crime increases. Yes, right. right. 
And so our caseload, uh, actually, Judge Ross, is if you divide the number of cases across all the Maryland Judiciary Circuit Courts, he's handling more cases per judge than any Anybody judge in the else. state. And, and we're killing him. Uh, but, but you say, well, we'll get him a second judge. Well, Judge Bell stood right, actually stood right here, and Judge Cathell, uh, Court of Appeals, and said, Scott, you will not get a second judge until the county provides, you know, the facilities. That's kind of the deal. That's right. that's the boss speaking. Right. right. That's the boss. Speaking. Yeah. And the reason for that, you know, people people don't understand the district court, which is the brick building right across, across the, the street. street. And that's the Carter Hick is, is Carter that, and Hickman right. Right, uh, building. Uh, that is a state building. That is a state court. Okay. Totally uh, separate. Totally, totally separate. Totally separate. And although we're one judiciary, but and of course they, people can appeal from the district court. But when they come to the circuit court, the circuit court is a county court. Right. And so the, the physical plant, the physical building is funded by the all counties in county. Baltimore City. Uh, all that's true across the whole state of Maryland. But, but we desperately, we've got, we've got property across the street. Uh, and I maintain that the courthouse should remain in downtown Centerville, just sure. for what you pointed just out earlier. Just for convenience. Exactly. And it's, it's, the center, it's the center of the town. Exactly. Right. It breaks my heart, and you probably travel, and you go through these nice quaint towns all over our nation. Well, usually they have a bypass built there, and then everybody rushes to build on the bypass, and you end up with buildings downtown that are boarded up. You don't have a center. You don't have There's a center. No center right? Village. You know, and I think that is terribly, terribly sad. Uh, why do people move to Queen Anne's County? They love the ambiance. It's they a love village. I, I, as you know, I rode my bike up. Yes. You walked out of your office. Yes. Our producer walked across the street and made it very nice. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Scott, what would, if, if and when we did get a new courthouse, which you said would be right across the street, this will remain what, do you think? Right. And, and thank you for asking that mm -hmm. question because I've had people say, well, you can't tear that down. My God, it would never be torn down. Uh, <laughs> uh, I would be staying in front of it. No. You, know, you and I would all be chained to the building. That's exactly right. right. But, but it, it should be renovated, and the Orphan's Court uh, wants to come back. Uh, Judge DiPietro okay. wants to bring his court back where it was originally, okay. right over was here. here. And Wednesday Ann Cannon, our, our, our register wills, okay. and her office would come back. So the here. judge of Orphan's Court would yes. be, okay, mm -hmm. I see, and they're currently in the Liberty Building. Liberty Building, oh, okay. which would free up space in the sure, Liberty Building. Sure, makes sense. And, and also, that would still leave room left over. I mean, the county can look at many things, but but maybe the state's attorney, you know. Okay. Could, could so you'd have some room, we keep a, where are, just Scott, just so where are we? Because of the economy, we're just stuck. Yeah, right, the commissioners are really faced with a real challenge there because, yeah. matter of fact, we had a meeting in Annapolis uh, with uh, the controller uh, last week and, and his uh, deputy, uh, Jerry Klausmeyer, and members of the courthouse committee, Tom Sequala, Cal Gray, Nick Diotis, who chairs that committee. Um, uh, we're there, Ken Jandura, who is with AECOM, that's been working with the study. Uh, we were there to talk, and and because Anne Arundel County built a new courthouse. Oh, they did build it. They yes, moved they ahead. Moved, okay. And they did move ahead. And uh, probably the, the main thing I got from that meeting, we were trying to look at a public-private partnership. Sure, sure. Uh, that may or may not be a, a vehicle, and the, uh, Greg Todd was also there, the county administrator. And so th those uh, folks have to sit down and, and do some planning, but but the planning has been going on. How I many know, years now? Uh, well, 10, my, 15, 20, you tell my me. My dad was, uh, was this is the subject matter in 1990, okay. you know, and so here, here we are. But So something has to happen. And, and, I, and I say that, and I don't want to sound like an alarmist, but, no. but something will happen if we have some unhappy situation because the security, the sheriff, Gary Hoffman, does a wonderful job. But it's old school. Scott, it's exactly. all right. His I mean, people tell being, them, I, I don't mean to interrupt, but do we not have now people on trial who walk past the jurors or the yes, audience at yes. least? Now, I, you showed me once the elevator. As I understand, the jury is... <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, they're confronting these people. Exactly, right? and, and and that's just not good. No. That, that's, it's, it's not good for either party, no, right? No. No. We're, well, we're doing judicial business uh, in the 21st century with an 18th century building. Okay. So it's time for change. It's time for a change. I, I'm a taxpayer like everybody else, and I, you know, but... Um, we it, need to do something. We need, it's like Jim Friel Sr. told me years ago, he said, Scott, you do not let your infrastructure fall down no. around your ears. No. Hey, let's, let's build something new and get a new judge and move on. Right? Yes, exactly. Now, Scott, you had a couple other topics you well, want to share. Just a quick thing about jury. Sure. We, we sure. changed uh, as far as our jury system works. And I've had several people approach me. I used to be the jury commissioner, but, but Judge Ross and I went to the county, and we, and we now have Ms. Dawn Knock, 
uh, who is the jury commissioner. She's also the ADR coordinator for, okay. for mediation, and she's also the assignment clerk. So that that's worked out well. But people say, well, will I get another notice? You know, once I get my notice. So when in the I mail. get when I get a notice in the mail, you've been selected right. from the pool, mm -hmm. and that's a citizen's responsibility, yes, right? Yes. And we don't let anybody get off, right? right? It's but, fair. But, but we can move them around. I right. mean, that that's the critical. You're thing. flexible. You're We're flexible. the court's flexible. Judge Ross is very flexible. But uh, they they want to know about well, we, well, I have a notice for what day I show up. No, you won't be. And what you're asked to do is to either call in every night. That's a number they can call. Exactly, because they're only on for, for a month. It used yeah. to be, it used to be on for six months. I can remember when I first moved yeah. here 30-some years ago, it right. was like you're on from December to June or something right. like exactly. that. Right, exactly. Yeah. Well, now it's only 30 days. Okay, and even within that period, uh, Judge Ross and Dawn has the, the, the authority to move people to another month. Okay. Yeah, cause we, we don't want to... To help them out. Exactly. Them out. But, uh, but what I suggest people do is, is go on the Internet and, and, and go to the, to the court's website, and we have a jury section there, and it actually gives juror numbers, and you can really look there and see exactly what Exactly when you're gonna be online, okay. Believe it or not, the, the largest complaint I get from people after they've served jury duty, say, gee, I was on jury duty for 30 days, but all my they trials were canceled. Me. Oh, I know. You know, and, and which is good, but, but they've still done a great service for the county sure. and the court because they were available, ready, willing, and able to do their duty. Scott, I'm gonna say, I, I was called for the grand jury, and I was called for regular jury, and if you haven't done it as a, as a citizen, it's a wonderful way to yes, get, a, I think, a closer look at how the judiciary system works, and once you've done, you go, hey, wow, this is not a bad thing, and it works. Right. Yeah, I've had so many people tell yeah. me that you know yeah. it, you know, I know, we know people are busy and people's schedules and 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 the economic impact a bit, a bit but we, we we try to reduce that and still have their system sure. work. Well, it's uh, their community. It's just like voting. Do it. Yes. Right. Yes. Then you, I always think then you can't complain if right. you voted. That's if you serve right. on a jury, then you can say, hey, I'm part of the system. Yeah, it works. Which well, is you good. know, you make a good point there. I've had people say to me, well, I I don't vote because I'm not registered, but I don't want to be pulled for jury duty. I said, well, you better tear up your Maryland driver's license then because they pull from that list also. Sure. You know, so people don't realize that. <laughs> They're going to get you one with you. Yeah. But it is, it's the, we're not asked as citizens to do very much, no, right? No, but no. spending 30 days on a list, and like you said, you're probably not even going to get called. Exactly. And if you do, like I said, I enjoyed some of the cases. I, uh, I learned how lawyers work, how the judge works, and it's a very uh, sane, a uh, fair system, I think. Yes, it is. Okay. And matter of fact, I've even had people complain they would be, they would come to the courthouse on a particular trial day, and but but would not be selected. Disappointed. Either. Yeah, you say, gosh, you know, they, <laughs> they didn't select me or they didn't get to me on the list. And, okay. And I'm I'm really pleased because Queen Anne's County, the citizens, 99.9 .9 percent. They help you out. They really they? do. Yeah. They really do. And like I say, it's not a that big of a deal. No. And I think it bodes well for our community. Sure. And that's what's so beautiful about Queen Anne's County. Well, it's County. a jury of your peers. Yes. A jury of your fellow citizens deciding these cases. And certainly, we, we hopefully reflect the mores and the rules of our society. Yes. So, you know, get on there and give it a shot. It's not right, that bad. Right, Okay. Someday, when, when we have the opportunity to talk again, yeah, I'd like yeah. to, to, to come back. I'm reading a book. I just actually got it yesterday um, that I uh, had a lady. Uh, she's a Ph.D. out of New England. And uh, Judge Ross, I think she talked with Judge Ross also, just wrote a book. And it, but it tells a story about Queen Anne's County when we had a civil trial up in Queen Anne's County that um, um, we had a, uh, a ghost testify. Yeah, you would tell me before the show. Now, let's say that again, because so, someone ran out of the kitchen and came back. We uh, actually had a ghost that testified. testified. Now, this is a great little piece of history. Go ahead. Yeah. Develop Testi it a little bit. Testifi tell me. Testified through a friend of his. So, uh, you know. so explain it. So someone approached the bench. and, and So how did it go from there? Someone said through a medium, I guess is the word we use. Right, right. So how did it? <laughs> right. Well, I, I'm, I'm just getting into this. Yeah, okay, okay. And, and, uh, but I, the little bit I've read is his very best friend, there was this, uh, there was a property dispute, and, and, it, and he had four illegitimate children, and, but in his will, he wanted his property left to these children okay. and, uh, and his wife. And it, so he, he passed away and then unhappily his wife passed away very shortly after mm. that. And then there was a, a civil trial over this because- Who would get the property. Exactly, who would get the property. But his very best friend, uh, uh, Mr. Biggs, uh, actually came to court and testified. And he testified to things that only the deceased would know. So they asked him questions yes. that only the deceased would yes. know. Yes. 
And, and it's interesting because some of the attorneys, for instance, Joseph Hopper Nicholson, okay. you know, was one of the judges, uh, or was it actually at that point an attorney, attorney. and uh, it, it later was a judge, was, was, part of, was part of one of the counsel there. Fact at that time. is stranger than fiction, is it yes, not? Yes, it is. So this person was allowed to say that he was getting messages or yes, whatever? Yes, yes, and, and it's, it's on the record. Only in America. That's Only what I love America. about it. All right. Scott, while we hear the chime in the background, our time's almost up. Hey, let me let me just switch topics a little bit. Do you have something else? You, was that no, was no, another no, time? No, You've lived now in Queen Anne's County how long? Oh, gosh. I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> I mean, I know you're born over and raised. Over 60 years. Okay, yeah. so over 60 years. Tell me, we asked, we've asked all the people we've had on the show, what's the biggest change you've seen? Okay, so I'm going to get away from the court. You were born and raised in Queen Anne's County. You, you talked about the population right. kind of got, st got stagnant there for a while, 18,000. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. as, as you and I are old timers, if you look back and said, Fred, here are the couple things I see well, that it's changed. Well, I, I, the, the first thing that strikes me is probably the traffic. Okay. Um, Which everyone talks about. Yes. Right? I mean, we, you know, live on my mother's farm up in Churchill. And, and um, matter of fact, we used to have a neighbor, Mr. James Hall, uh, Jimmy Hall's grandfather. And everybody in the community knew that he couldn't see very well and he couldn't hear. And everybody knew when you saw this red pickup truck coming <laughs> down the away. lane, you, you stopped you know, <laughs> because he would pull right on the 213. Okay. Can you imagine doing that oh. today? 213, I, I, I argue, is the most dangerous road in Queen Anne's County. Yeah, maybe be, I'm not counting, 30150 is, but this, the way they travel. Yes, and the, yeah, yes it, it is. I come down at the end of the lane, and some mornings I have to sit there, you know, three or four minutes. <laughs> Just fingers know, crossed and get a break. To, to get out. So traffic, and I, I hear that from most people who live, because, you know, they talk about, I mean, we had a couple guys here, Dr. Harry Rose, they're talking about taking horse and buggy into schools, yes. and they're talking about milk wagons picking them up. Now, 2.13 in the morning, I think, is a racetrack. Yes. I mean, 3.01.50, we don't even want to go there. Right, right. right. So traffic, what else? Any traffic. other? Uh, agriculture, I think agriculture has okay. really changed. Of course, we have an operating farm that, that, that we used to. I was born on a dairy farm sure. and milk cows and that type of thing. Uh, my wife's parents uh, out of Roosburg, Masons, uh, uh, Bill Mason. Matter of fact, he, my father-in-law, will turn 90 years young Congratulations, in, yeah. in August. And believe it or not, he's still out there cultivating on a tractor every day. The secret is just keep working, right? Keep, keep working. working. Do and something. They, they've got, as a matter of fact, their farm is a century farm. It's been in that family over 100 uh, years. Over 100 years. And uh, so Pop, is, uh, he, he loves, loves his agriculture, but he remembers when they used to use mules. Okay. And now they transition to tractors and open tractors. And now they've transitioned. Now they've got stereos, they've got air, air conditioning. conditioning. They're yeah. better than my car, right? right? Yeah. And now you see in the county all the pivot irrigation systems because, okay. as you know, we're in a drought. The sure. station's this in This is terrible. Right we're now. in trouble, aren't we? We're yes, it is. It's, it's terrible. And maybe the other thing, I guess, is Ken Island. But, you know, I hear people complain about the, how much, uh, how many people on Ken Island and, and the business corridor. but, but in the same token, I see businesses that have come to Queen Anne's County that I think benefit Queen oh, Anne's sure. County, and and the people that come along. There's some very bright people that have moved to Queen Anne's County, and hopefully will will hope it will help the county commissioners. If we manage the growth, don't yes. you think it's a positive, right? right. I right. mean, we've got we've gone from one high school to two high schools. That was an improvement. Ken Island, all those little businesses, they bring in tax dollars. Exactly. Right? We like to fuss about them, but they bring in tax dollars. Well, that's what we need to yeah. grow our economy sure. and, and still maintain the quality of life. Yeah. And there's always this faction between those, good morning, between these people. Uh, some people want no growth. Some people want to grow everything. Uh, there's a compromise. I, I, yeah, exactly. I think, there's a, I think there's a middle ground there. And uh, I think that the, the word is sustainable growth. Okay. And, uh, Scott, let me ask you if there's one thing you could give your grandchildren, okay, that you had in your life in Queens. If I said to them, all right, Scott, you get the magic wand. Wow. And you're going to say to grandchildren, when you're 60 like me, what was this? Or one thing, like with me, I always tell people, I don't lock my doors at night. Right. There's this safety. I hope that qual I hope my grandchildren get that quality of life. Of You went back to the village concept. Right. Quarter. Is there one thing you'd like to leave your grandchildren? Well, I, I, I think just what you said, I would like to leave them and hope their children would, would enjoy the quality of life. Okay. And that's what I think Queen Anne's County provides. Uh, we're not the asphalt jungle, uh, and I don't think we should be. Scott, here's my index, and we're about ready to stop. My index is Centerville. I, I have relatives come from Boston. We have relatives from overseas. 
they walk around with me and their mouths drop because I say hi to everybody. And what happens, yes. they, and they say hi back. Yes. Yes. And I have friends from Boston said, Fred, if you said that to a person in Boston, they're blowing whistles and calling for the cops. I know. It's that small town environment, which I think we love. Well, you know, that's interesting. I use that as a gauge. You know, yeah. when I go to the bank, take to the people's deposit or down to Edwards Drugstore, if I meet someone on the street, I will acknowledge them and sure. speak to them. Sure. And hopefully they do reciprocate. But you see some people that they walk with their head down yeah. and they don't look up. You it's a know, shame, isn't it? it is a shame. It's you a know shame. that they've come from some environment where you just don't do that. And, yeah. and, uh, but and we still do, and that's what makes it nice. I, I hope that never changes. Well, Scott, I hope you never change. You become an institution oh, in Queen Anne's yeah, County. I'm getting old. <laughs> Scott, we're both getting old, okay. Well, this is Fred McNeil. You've been watching Discover Queen Anne's County. I've been delighted to have Scott McGlashan with us, who shared with us where our Queen Anne's County uh, uh, or statue of Queen Anne's yeah. came from shared a little history. So thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time.